Morning everybody, this is William Green. These are my green pets. And today's update we're going to look at which of the Catlias are furthest along getting ready to bloom. We're going to look at some new growths that we're not sure if they're going to bloom or not. If they're just new growths or just or flower spikes. And then we're going to look at one plant in bloom, a little bulbophyllum. And we'll also take a peek over at my huge grocery store grocery store phalaenopsis that is opening up and looking pretty nice so let's go let's get started Calia Rex uh, Iliapu is really showing its sheath now we're about a month out from blooming once that sheath has cleared the leaf sheath we should start to see uh, flower buds in the base there Really impressed this plant's put out a really nice big growth uh, compared to last year and compared to previous growth. So it's it's ready to go and, and I'm hoping for lots of flowers on this one. This Rex has never bloomed. This will if it in fact does bloom, it'll be the first year that this one has. So we'll give it a catch well name once it does bloom. You can see its sheath is actually pushing out there as well. And it's got another growth back here, so we might get lucky and have two flower spikes on this plant. But it will be nice to see the flowers on this plant as well for the first time. And this Catlin Rex, this is Mayu. Mayu got an HCC from the American Orchid Society last year. Mayu has gone ahead and popped open the first of three growths and I believe there is a sheath in there but you can't see it very clearly yet so I would expect those other two growths to pop open pretty soon as well it would be really nice if this plant decides to bloom three at once that would be wonderful Other than those three plants, there are several with large maturing growths right now. And it's just going to be a toss up which ones are going to bloom. Really nice big growths on this one, and then a third one coming up down here. This plant has got a nice little growth pushing. And then it's got one over here that kind of came up kind of funky, so it's kind of pushing hard to get out there. Got a new nice growth back here as well. Not as not as large, doesn't look quite as large as the other plants, but maybe carrying a seed pod is the reason, or maybe there's another reason that that's not happening. So overall, we are looking good, and we should have lots of Catlia blooms in the next couple months. Another Calia species that's doing something interesting. This is Calia walkeriana. And not really sure if this is a spiking growth or a blooming growth. But either way, it's okay. Wish it would spike, but it's really not the season for them to spike. They usually spike in the winter and we're getting into spring. It's got another growth pushing out at the base of this one right here. So that's great. And hopefully we'll get some good roots going. And I was looking at pictures of Walkeriana in the wild. And the wild plants, the bulbs are so big, they're almost completely spherical. Just wonderful. There's some really great pictures on Flickr that people have taken of this species uh, growing in trees in Brazil. And uh, yeah, they look a lot happier than mine. So hopefully we can get some good roots on this plant this year and get those bulbs nice and plump. This is the Calia Jose Marti that I divided and this is the part that I kept and you can tell since I've divided it and stuffed all the new roots into a pot the bulbs have plumped up significantly. They were very very shriveled now they're nice and round again. 
Very interesting how that's happened. It does have a new growth pushing out uh, down here. You can just see at the tip of my finger there, that little pointy green thing. So that's great. I would hope that this plant is going to put out a nice new bunch of roots and get going towards pushing out a blooming growth. Might not bloom for another year or so, but does looks do, does seem to be looking better. This complex hybrid RLC Jesse Lee. It's got a nice growth pushing out as well. Jesse Lee has really nice um, orange flowers and that little growth looks great so hopefully we're going to see it blooming probably in the fall but I wouldn't be surprised if once this um, growth is complete that it probably will put out another growth as well this is a very very vigorous plant very been very easy to grow and hopefully it's going to take off this year The other Cattleya species that I have are seedlings. This is a large seedling. This is a tree in the AC Bridge. And uh, it just completed this growth. Nice little pink freckles on this one. Hopefully we'll get some even larger leaves on this plant this summer. And maybe if we're lucky, it will try to bloom in the winter. This will be the, the soonest, this is the closest seedling to bloom. Uh, this one next to it, this is a Calia hardiana. Nice new growth pushing out of here. This is still a couple years from blooming, I guess, but it does seem to be growing all right. And I've got this one in granite rocks with a little bit of sphagnum on top. You can see the roots just don't want to stay in the pots. This is a semi-alba labiata, semi-alba. Nice growth on this. It just completed. It's trying to root now. And maybe we'll see another growth push out in a couple months. This is a Cattleya triony. Uh, this is a Mer Mericlone of Cashins, FCC AOS. Um, Fred Clark, I believe, was offering selfings of Cashins on his uh, most recent Cattleya list. Lots of interesting plants on there. Uh, a couple more Labiatas. Nice coloration on these guys. And then a mossy eye as well. Pushing out a nice new growth there. Very exciting. Right behind it we've got Cali Gaskeliana. Pushing out a new growth. This one kind of had a rough time last year, but it seems to be getting rooted pretty well and recovering and hopefully we'll get some decent growth on it this year. Maybe this and a, maybe another growth as well would be nice. Seedlings are definitely the name of the game in my grow tent. This Dawiana Rosita is a selfing of rogue orchids. Wonderful clone. And hopefully these will be as great as their parent plant. Got some more Dawianas. Dawiana Oreas. We've got a Rex back here. Got a couple more Rexes. And then all of these are Rexes as well. This is a variety pack of different varieties of Rexes from Peru Flora. We've got Glossfeldiana going out here. And then some more little Rexes. Just trying to get bigger. Roots are looking good. They're starting to crawl out of their pots. And then one last group back here. Also putting out some larger leaves. Kind of jockeying for position there. Hopefully they're getting enough light and food for all of them. They should be okay. And then I'll separate them when they get bigger. And here's a couple little Rexes growing on deer antlers. Just as an experiment. Seem to be doing all right on there too. Uh, Bobo films. I've got a few Bobo films. This is my largest. This is Hal Bobo film Echinolabium. Hal does have a new growth in the back there. You can't really see it, but uh, it's pushing. And his bulbs are very, very shriveled. 
He's got one bulb that's kind of turning dark brown from the top, but it's going very, very slowly, so I'm not super worried about it, although maybe I should be. But I'm hoping that the new growth will root and that those bulbs will get plumped up, and I'm hoping there's not more wrong with Hal than I than just missing some roots. So hopefully Hal will be doing better soon. Another bulbo film. I've got two bulbos in this little basket. The one with the yellowing leaves, this is Bulbophyllum crocium, and this bloomed back in January. And uh, it it just drops its leaves every once in a while, I'm not quite sure. Maybe I let it get too dry, or... don't know. But then next to it, there is a Bulbophyllum catenulatum in here as well, back in this area. And that one kind of blooms on and off. Seems to be twice a year that it likes to bloom. Back here we've got Bulbophyllum lovely Elizabeth. Now lovely Elizabeth was a huge plant that got divided last year. And it's put out a nice fat new bulb. And I think that we should be expecting a new growth pushing out of that bulb soon as well. It's been really interesting to watch this plant root. Look how furry the roots are. If you look at that root down there in the, in the mix, they really are. They really come out with a lot of root hairs. And bulbos don't like to be repotted, probably because of all those root hairs getting disturbed. Next to that, we've got Bulbophila medusae. This is one of the very first orchids I ever bought back in 2014. And it's been divided several times. It's got really nice growths on it. And the potting mix. This mix has just worked out perfectly for me this time. I tried something different. This time I'm using, um, it's potted in, of course there's a fungus gnat flying around. It's potted in granite in a, in a net pot. I wish I could oh, get down here with a breaking something off. Yeah, you can see it's a net pot. It's got granite rocks and just the top layer, you can see even some of the granite rocks poking out the top there. Just the top layer has fine bark sprinkled all, all over the top, so just a fine bark mix over granite, and watered daily, and the roots have just really loved it. Look at it. I, I don't know if I've ever had root growth this nice. They seem really happy with that, so that's great. The newest growths look good, and we're getting some more growth coming. And then next to that we've got... Bulbophyllum lepidum, and lepidum's in a tall plastic flask, and I just kind of potted it in there because I wanted to keep it from crawling. They kind of get unruly, you know, they kind of crawl out over the place, so I figure for bulbophyllums, a shallow, shallow media, but in, with, in a pot with tall walls, can try to contain them a little bit. And this bloomed twice last fall with really cute little flowers. So hopefully we'll see more from that this year. All right, and one more Bulbophyllum. This is Bulbophyllum capilipes. And uh, this is a mounted plant. And this plant is actually available for sale if somebody is a collector of Bulbos. This originally came from Andy's Orchids. And I'd like to get thirty dollars for it plus shipping that's about what Andy charges it's in bloom right now and it's got spikes coming on the way and it's just kind of unusual bulbo long skinny leaves and kind of a rambling habit but it's really nice and uh, if anyone's interested in that please get in touch email me or send me a message and I'd like to I'd like to find this guy a new home Now the catacetums are all in one place, they're all in this area now, and there's five of them, I can't believe it, actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, six of them now. Um, so let's have a look, so this is Mormodia Jumbo World, this was in a much smaller pot last week, I repotted it in an air cone pot, and uh, you know, square pots aren't really great for plants like this because the roots really like to kind of go around and around inside the pot and 
for the square pots they kind of hit the corners and then they stop or they they are at weird angles and it's not my favorite but the square pots can't be beat for maximum use of space and the plants still do okay in them so got two growth there's another growth poking out the bottom here you can see the green and this one's rooting like crazy and then next to it we've got Signodes wanting to light it's got a really nice new growth pushing out on him and the old plant is still actively rooting so um, I've let it get very very dry and then water it a little bit and then let it get dry again so I'm keeping it drier but not totally totally dry uh, well, back here we've got a uh, Cloessia Rebecca Northern it does have a small little green nubbin poking out and then there are two other Rebecca Northerns. These were in the same pot last week, but then I took the smaller one out and put it to, put it in its own pot. So this one is, these are both the same, they're from the same division of Grapefruit Pink clone of Rebecca Northern. So we're gonna see what those do. And then over here we've got Signo Keys Coopery as well, putting out nice new growth. So this little, <laughs> This little enclave of catacetums are going to take over this whole side of the tent in the next few months as their leaves get bigger and bigger. They're going to be huge. One plant that has really grown out of nothing the past few weeks, this is uh, Malaxis ophritis. And it grows on, it just, I leave it in the bottom of the, of the tent because it gets so tall. You can see its new growth has pushed out lots of roots as well. This is a terrestrial orchid that goes dormant in the winter. You can see the bulb just kind of lays there for about four months and then beginning of February it starts to push out and it push, pushes out very quickly. So we will be seeing uh, flowers pushing out of this thing probably in the next month or so as well. I also want to show you my grocery store Phalaenopsis here. I call it affectionately Phalaenopsaurus because it's enormous and you know these things just keep growing. But it's got it has six nice flowers on it. And of course I can't get in front of it. Here we go. Oh, nice one. A little bit better view. pretty all right so let's talk about uh, one last thing and that's this Catlia Rex this is Kelia Kelia was the very first one to bloom of the flask that I got back in 2014 and last week Kelia had surgery so I noticed that the back there were several five different bulbs in the back here older bulbs that they were yellow they were shrivelly they had spots on them and there was one that had a black spot that was just, well, kind of a brownish black spot that just kind of was slowly expanding. So I took off that, I took everything off up to the bad bulb, but then I also took the next bulb up as well. And when I did, and a lot of people saw this on Instagram, and you can still see this because uh, it's posted in my regular posts, but there was, it, it looked like a purplish ring around the whole rhizome where I cut here. And it's, you know, if you look carefully, it, it does look like this tissue, you know, you can see it's brown next to the green there. So the question is, is that the line of whatever, you know, many people are saying you've got Fusarium in this plant. It looks very suspicious, I agree. So, you know, I'm getting advice like you need to take off more. So, I don't know. I sprinkled cinnamon on it. <laughs> that's not going to... I don't know that's not going to do much, but anyway. So, I am just going to keep my eye on it right now. Um, I'm afraid to cut more. If I... Well, I could cut probably here. Take this bulb off. And then, maybe if I cut into here, there won't be any 
any of that brown stuff. But it does look from the outside like you can see where it creeps up. That line there with the green and the brown. So, I don't know. I did give it a thiamel treatment. I soaked the whole plant in thiamel for about five minutes. The new growth, I can't, it, it definitely seems to have slowed growth, but it it still seems to be growing. I feel like this, I cut, I think, I feel like it wasn't the best time to cut the plant. I think I got a little bit panicky. Um, but I think if I were going to cut, I should have waited until this growth was completely developed. And then I probably could have taken off a bigger portion. And I might still do that before this roots. Because this plant didn't have very many roots in the first place. And it just now rooted from this growth in the winter. So I was really hesitant to unpot it. So I cut it while it was still in the pot. and didn't move around too much. So there might, future cuts probably will need to be made. I did send all of the pieces that I cut off to the plant pathology laboratory in uh, Fort Collins at University of Colorado. So um, hopefully that made that there okay. It has been uh below freezing all week here so if the mail truck or anything was uh, exposed to sub freezing temperatures those samples may have gotten just turned to mush so don't know what we're going to hear back from them but um, it did not look great it did not look great so we, we definitely got our eye on this plant you know a lot of people have said you know you need to do a complete clean out of your tent and you know look out and i agree like the plant, the, you know, the tent, the thing about the tent is, you know, everything's been in here for over a year, and yeah, I mean, there's stuff circulating around. I just, I stay vigilant, but I mean, I I don't really have another place I can put a, a, a plant in terms of isolating things. I mean, I just try to keep, th keep things as healthy as I can and stay on top of things and use chemicals if necessary and... Um, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. Hopefully, I won't regret it. But if I do, you know, you guys can say you told me so. All right, that is all for this week. I really appreciate you guys stopping by. And we'll see you next time right here on My Green Pets. I'm William Green. Bye.